um, today many people talk about the human, so I will talk about the human's good friend, Kato. Yeah. So I want to briefly explain what is Kato. Kato is a herbivorous animal and is one of the most important livestock in the world. There are two subspecies of uh, Kato. The first one is Taurin. Maybe most European and East Asian people are familiar with this animal. They have a flat back and yeah, they, yeah, they are widely raised in the uh, temperate regions. But we, if we go to the tropical or subtropical regions, we can meet Indicin, Indicin. And yeah, they are highly adapted to tropical climates. So they have a distinct, very distinct phenotype. They have a hump and saggy skin. So in Taurin and in Dyson are highly divergent, so their genetic distance is about half of human and chimps, so maybe chimp and bonobo, yeah, closer. But they still uh, actively interbreed, so in central China or in Africa, there are many hybrids between Taurin and Dyson. And present-day cattle, they are all domesticated ones. So where is wild cattle? Wild cattle is called Orox, and we can meet Orox in the region because they are now all extinct. So uh, once Orox was uh, distributed the whole Eurasia, uh, except uh, the North Pole and the North Africa. You can uh, simply think about, I think that the Taurin is a human and the Orox is Neanderthal or Denisovan, and the Indicin is maybe more decent, like Homo erectus, like that. Uh, before the genomic era, there are many archaeological studies about the origins of uh, African cattle. The first African cattle uh, was found in Egypt and Sudan, and they are morphologically they are, uh, they are thought as, as uh, taurine. And the spread of taurine, the spread of domestic cattle, uh, were thought as around three to four thousand happened with the evidence of uh, Asian taurine in Tlemcen Valley. And after that, later, the South Asian Indicin was traded in, uh, introduced into Eastern Africa by trade. So, and there was an extensive mixing between African Taurin and Indicin happening in Eastern Africa. So today, many, uh, all, of, all of, most of Eastern African breeds are African Indicin, which is a mix between Taurin and Indicin. However, the Western Africa, uh, the influx, influx of Indicin happened later, and uh, quite very, the mixture proportion is variable, so even there are some pure African Taurin breeds exist. Archaeologists uh, raised many hypotheses, like uh, first, uh, first African Taurin was domesticated independently in Africa, or they are introduced from Middle East or they interbreed between uh, African Orox or not. But uh, morphological and uh, archaeological records solely using these uh, evidence it is hardly to answer these questions. So we need to wait the uh, genomic era came in. I just want to show you the uh, Orox record in Africa. The famous one is an uh, uh, African Orox painting in Egypt. So you can see the uh, it's a hunting scene and is around 3,000 years ago, so you, you can see the African Taurin and African Orox coexist at least until 3,000 years ago. With the uh, advent of genomic studies, many studies revealed that African Taurin have a very genetic, uh, genetic profile distinct from that of Eurasian Taurin. In the PCA of cattle genotypes, the PC1 separates the Taurin and Indicin because they are quite divergent. But also, PC2 separates African taurin from Eurasian taurin. And African cattle predominantly belong to mitochondria haplogroup T1, which is uh, rarely found in Eurasian ta taurin. So to explain this unique genetic profile of African taurin, three hypotheses proposed. The first one is African orcs introgression, which means African taurin uh, were introduced from Middle East and subsequently are mixed with African Orox. The second one is after introduction, uh, African Taurin experiences strong genetic bottleneck and natural selection. The third one is they are independently domesticated in Africa. In our previous research, we found best population, uh, best scoring population graph explaining 
including Asia, uh, Indies and, and Orocs and domesticate taurine in Asia and uh, Africa. African taurine are best explained between uh, or mixed between Iranian, Asian Iranian taurine and Vajar Orocs. And this Vajar Orocs ancestry is shared with the Moroccan Orocs, uh, which means these are th this event happened in Africa. Uh, and you can see the position of Vajar Orocs is uh, early divergent early divers from the other orcs, which makes the, uh, this African taurine are distant from Eurasian taurine. But still, uh, remaining thing is like, the detail of the, this admixture history, because we used the early frequency data set, and uh, it, this was not calibrated graph, so we don't know like, when this admixture happened, and the identity of major orcs. And in the genome of African taurine, which part of genomes are derived from African orocs. To ju jump into the main question, then why we need to detect orocs derived tracts? Because I want to answer the question whether the uh, introgression from local orocs helped African taurine to adapt to this local climate in Africa. There are two famous case studies. The first one is very famous. It's IPES, uh, Denis one IPES1 gene in Tibetan genome. IPES1, uh, Denis one IPES1 gene helps oxygen transportation. Uh, so it helps the high altitude adaptation. The second one is uh, African Indicin get the gene packages from Asian Indicin, which are led to, to tropical climate adaptations. So uh, the main questions posed in the studies are three. First, could we extract orox derived tracts in African taurine genome? Second, could we reconstruct the detailed admixture history using orox tracts? Third, are orox derived tracts under selection pressure? Alternatively, the orox introgression helped African, to, African taurine to adapt in local climate and environment. To answer this question, we use the method to detect archaic tracts. It's called scos HMM. First, we need a target genome. Target genome is African taurine, which are experienced the admixture with the uh, archaic groups. And the second one is in-group. In-group is a group which did not experience the archaic admixture. And the major orocs, which we did not sample, it uh, corresponds to the archaic lineage. Let's say TRK T -R -K is the coalescence time between T uh, in group and major orocs, and T in group is the coalescence time between in group and target. We use the huge difference of TRK and T in group. And the uh, right hand figure shows the distribution of mutation on target genome. First, we removed variants found in in group, which left uh, private mutation on target genome. You can see the, the blue tracts uh, corresponds to archaic tracts. We saw many uh, high density of private mutations stacked in these archaic tracts because TRK is much higher than in group. We use the count variance in each window for hidden Markov model, and we optimize the transition and emission probability, and subsequently we decode and I calculate the probability in each window to be in archaic state or not. And we detect and def define and detect the archaic tracts, which is over than some threshold. The HM parameters also can convert you to biologically meaningful parameters. So, but maybe yeah, yeah, just briefly explain the order of the mixture event. Uh, it makes a short, shorter archaic tract. It makes, uh, uh, again, the transition probability between states higher. So we, we can see the T of the mix and uh, the transition probability is proportionate. So we can convert like, to, to estimate the other mix, like TRK and T in group, and other mixture proportion A. So we use 31 African taurine genome and we detect about two to three hundred megabase pair per individual taurine genome. We want to identify we wanted to identify these archaic tracts are really 
Bayesian or Oroxy derived. So we use two approaches. The first, we calculate the F4 statistics, which measure the genetic affinity between populations. This is the F4 statistics to measure the genetic affinity between X and uh, Africa Taurine compared to Iran Bronze Age. Because Bayesian Orox is a uh, Bayesian in a phylogenetic position compared to other Eurasian Orox, so it, we expect uh, in archaic tracts, uh, archaic tracts have, uh, are distantly related to, to other Eurasian Orox, so we, we expect the more negative signal in archaic states. So we calculate the archaic and non archaic and whole genome. So the most left one is the Moroccan Orox, so except Moroccan Orox, in every other orox and even in indicin, the signal goes more negative. But while uh, Moroccan orox, uh, Moro for Moroccan orox, the signal uh, did, not, did not deviate from zero significantly. And we also uh, estimate the uh, admixture pro proportion, what we used in our previous study. So in whole genome, the major orox, admixture proportion was about 18%. But it increased uh, about 40 to 50 percent, which confirmed this uh, Bayesian Orox origin of these archaic tracts. So, using HMM parameters, we converted into biological meaningful parameters, so, and we reconstru reconstruct uh, the admixture history. First, divergence time between Taurin and Bayesian Orox was estimated around 54 to 93,000 years ago. And the divergence time between Eurasian taurine and African taurine was estimated around four to nine thousand years ago. And the mixture time was three to four thousand years ago. And the proportion was, was uh, 12 to 18 percent. I compare this estimate with the previous study in archaeological and paleoclimate studies. First, uh, some uh, paleoclimate studies report uh, about 67 to 78,000 years ago, the Sahara was wetter than today, so maybe there was a corridor open between Asia and Africa. And also this uh, period corresponds to out of Africa event in human. So we suggest uh, in this period, African Orox start to be isolated from Middle Eastern Orox. And, and also domestication of Taurine event predates our T in group estimate which confirms again this African taurine came from Middle East, not, domest uh, not independently domesticated in Africa. And this estimate also corresponds to early evidence of domesticated cattle in Africa. And interestingly, the spread of domestication timing also matches well with our uh, admixture event and the uh, genomide level uh, admixture proportion is uh, well matched with our HMM parameters. Uh, we also want to detect positive selection on orox derived, derived tracts. Positive selection makes archaic tracts longer, orox tracts longer, and the frequency of orox tracts higher than genome-wide level. And we found a very strong positive signal on X chromosome. First, the archaic tract length is uh, average, on average longer in, on X chromosome than autosome. And we also found a very long, super long archaic tracts in, on X chromosome compared to autosome. And all of these 18 super long tracts are from single regions, uh, about 37 million base pair to 40 million base pair. And we found uh, also the orx, olive, uh, orx frequency is above top 1%. And we found several genes located in this region. Uh, we are now continuing to investigate the relationship uh, between the function of these genes and the adapta local adaptation. But the interesting thing is we found G6PD, and G6PD deficiency is, uh, it leads anemia in humans, so it's very unfav unfavorable, but the frequency of G6PD deficiency is higher, much higher in Africa, because it helps, it protects humans from malaria. So we maybe suggest it serves as similar role for African taurine to protect African taurine from local parasites or pathogen. So let's wrap up the study. The, we found uh, substantial amounts of oxygen tracts in African taurine genome. 
The second, uh, where we constructed the admixture history that matches uh, strongly support the African orox integration hypothesis. And we found strong positive selection signal on X chromosome likely related to local pathogen resistance. And our significance is we established a methodology to detect the orox derived tracts in domesticated cattle. And this approach helped us to discover key genes related to domestication and local adaptation. Thank you for our PI and the collaborator. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.